So I want to bring in CBS News campaign reporter Aaron Navarro, who has, who has been following the DeSantis campaign in New Hampshire. So Aaron, um, you know, uh, Nikki Haley's uh, describing the New Hampshire race as a two-person race. The president, the former president, rather, certainly has been zeroing in on Nikki Haley. Her, her language around him has become much harsher. In the meantime, there's Ron DeSantis. He, he's actually spending more time folk, look, sort of looking towards South Carolina than he is New Hampshire. What's going on with the campaign? Good morning, Anne-Marie. Well, it's a move that they're trying to put pressure on Nikki Haley to win her home state in South Carolina. They are shifting a majority of their campaign staff to the state. They are going to campaign this weekend in South Carolina. Now, they will be in New Hampshire on Friday and potentially Sunday. Monday and Tuesday, the day of the New Hampshire primary, is still unclear in terms of the governor's schedule. But it's an acknowledgment of kind of their positioning here in New Hampshire. They've spent less time here. They're polling numbers here have been worse than they maybe look even in Iowa where DeSantis placed a distant second to former President Trump and asked yesterday by reporters uh, what a realistic goal for him here is. DeSantis just said delegates. Now New Hampshire has a threshold, a 10% threshold. If you reach that you are able to get some of the state's 22 delegates mm. and right now that's DeSantis's goal here. So an acknowledgement that he may not play second and may not, will not win the state. Wow. Uh, in the meantime Congress Congressman Chip Roy, who's actually been supporting DeSantis, was on America Decides last night where he discussed the loss in Iowa. And, and I mean, yes, it's a loss in Iowa, but he did come in sort of second place. He tied for second place and attributed the low voter, voter turnout, though. That's what he thought was the problem. I want to play some of the sound. Half of the people who showed up to the polls didn't vote for President Trump. By the way, only 110,000 Republicans showed up in Iowa. We're trying to do something different and try to generate enthusiasm. Uh, we're doing that and trying to do it on the ground in South Carolina, New Hampshire. We believe the people deserve a choice, and we're going to keep moving forward. Um, so, Aaron, what can you tell us about voter turnout in Iowa? And I guess there must be some concerns because the weather has been bad across the board. I mean, maybe it's not as bad as it was in Iowa, but, you know, South Carolina bad is different than, say, Iowa bad. So are there generally concerns about this poor winter weather we've been having and whether or not voters will stay home? Well, real quick, Emory, I will take 30 degrees over negative 30 in, New in Iowa any day of the week. But <laughs> DeSantis has said that in Iowa, you can change your voter registration on caucus day. And he mm. has kind of attributed that to Nikki Haley's rise in the state. And he praises New Hampshire for not having that rule. In New Hampshire, you have to change your registration months in advance before the primary. Uh, again, insinuating that Nikki Haley does not, in the DeSantis in his campaign's eyes, does not appeal to core conservatives. And that is in part why they're looking to South Carolina. That's an electorate that they think meshes better with DeSantis' candidacy and hmm. his overall pitch. Uh, maybe an uphill battle. You know, it is her state. We'll see how it goes. Aaron Navarro, thank you. All right.